Right then, Sprouts and those who have not dabbled in the technical things. Look, if you came from, say, World of Warcraft, you'll be used to very crisp, stylized graphics and a game that, if you like its art style, essentially looks kind of timeless. Or maybe you came from a more modern photo real game like Elder Scrolls Online. I mean, damn, I remember that looking pretty good maxed out. Now, FF14 has got brilliant character design. I mean, I, I love all of the glams, uh, world design, art direction, all fantastic. A few aspects of its technical presentation do betray that it's running on rather odd tech with a storied history. So yes, this is a G-Shade video, but this is also one that I think will leave you understanding just a little bit more. FF14 began development in around 2005, and it was running on Crystal Tools, which, if that's an engine, the story of which is a bit of a disaster. Now, for A Realm Reborn, they used a custom engine again. Uh, this time, it wasn't Crystal Tools, uh, which ran the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy, but instead it was a custom engine that Yoshi P described as being a sibling to the Luminous engine. Luminous runs Final Fantasy XV. Well, the A Realm Reborn engine work kicked off January 2011. And, I mean, this is a custom engine. A Realm Reborn released August 2013. So whatever the hell those engineers did, it must have been a pretty damn incredible miracle. Certainly pretty fast though. And I think some issues can be felt today, as are the implications of ensuring that this would all work for an MMORPG. Unlike FF14 Legacy, which when completely maxed out actually looked pretty great, owing to it running on crystal tools, which really wasn't uh, an MMORPG engine interesting stuff. FF14 then has got high quality character models, lovely large environments, but look close and you will see a few issues. You know, anti-aliasing, sometimes textures that shimmer a bit. Indeed, it took until the Heavensward expansion to get DirectX 11 support. Now the game does try really hard, but there are some times that the age shows. And that's okay, that's normal for MMOs. Graphics are just one part of a game and FF14 does look great out of the box. But can we make it better? Well, to start, let's talk about color. In film, color grading is an extremely important part of the process. There's actually people called colorists uh, for whom their whole job is getting color right because color communicates mood emotion. It actually helps guide your experience of a movie, from extreme examples like maybe Grand Budapest Hotel, um, The Matrix, Blade Runner, uh, Fury Road. Now FF14, and funnily enough World of Warcraft as well, tend to be quite desaturated out of the box in terms of the colors. Now you might think, okay, there's no big colors, big whoop, who cares? No, it goes deeper, it's important, because the lower the contrast, the less able your eye is to determine detail, because one of the things that your brain uses to process visuals is contrast. Now, this makes your character and the world look less detailed. The color grade is rather neutral, and overall, it's a very low contrast image. Now, this does make the visuals less crisp and less dramatic. You know, that night scene where a torch is flickering, moodily illuminates a city wall. Lights that are off in the distance at night. And then that same color grade, meaning that as soon as you go into Limsa Liminsa, uh, the white stone literally sears your retinas out. Okay, jokes aside, we'll try to fix that bit up. But the point here is that color is important to your emotional perception of something, and also your perception of graphical fidelity. You could push things in a more moody direction if you really wanted to, or you could keep the stock colors and make them pop slightly more. There is a few more things beyond color though. FF14's ambient occlusion might not be what you want to use. There's one called MXAO I'm going to get to soon that I prefer. Um, FF14 doesn't really have a great fog solution to help blend the background well, nor does it have a distance blur, which often makes the entire image look very sharp and harsh to the eye, um, while the details still don't feel enhanced. Now, what's incredible is that we can overcome these limitations in post with G-Shade. So let's talk about that. G-Shade is a repackaging of Reshade, which is a post-processing injector, and it works seamlessly with FF14. 
And seriously, work it does. If you've ever used modded Skyrim and you have spent hours and hours in technical fiddly things with 50 windows open and trying to get your load order right, trying to get the right A, E, and B, I mean, you know how much of a pain in the ass that some of this more technical game modding stuff can, can really be. Not here. G-Shade is extremely easy to use. Simply go to this website, download it, and install it. That's all you need to do. Close FF14, install G-Shade, open FF14, done. Shift F2 brings up the menu, and Shift F3 toggles it on and off. It's that simple. Just use your mouse to browse the presets, look at them, and you're off to the races. If you do add any effect, though, ensure that they are sandwiched between these two UI effects that you can see in my bar there. That is super important because you don't want any graphical effects to be applying to your game interface. It looks strange. With that said, time to talk about what I use. All right, here's what I use. So, this does lean in a little heavy in so far as how it goes. I'll admit that straight up, but generally I do like it a lot, and here's why. So, here's my character's face with no G-Shade. And here's my character's face with G-Shade. And here's a side-by-side. The slightly tweaked preset that I'm using does a fair bit here. Now, the tweaking still goes on. You'll probably notice I've been playing around with one or two different SSAO filters across the shots. Um, it's kind of hard to get that one right, but get it right, and you can see the facial definition is just a lot stronger. Then, sharpening. Now, sharpening is generally a massive no for me in every game that has it as an option. I turn it off. Now here there is a little bit of sharpening, and you can somewhat see it in her skin. It almost resembles like pores in a not crazy unnatural way. I don't mind that too much, but overall for me it does help to crispen up some of the textures. I cannot believe I am saying this about something called sharpening in a game, but here we are. Uh, the next, the colors are a bit stronger, and quite a bit has been done to the lights and the darks. Now, all of this stuff, I think, leads to a more stark, dramatic scene and more defined facial features, which, of course, extends to the glam that I'm using. I mean, it to me, it's like, you know those memes of RTX on, RTX off, right? That meme format? It almost looks like that. I mean, I, I look at my character with G-Shade off, and it kind of looks like a different character because just the definition isn't there, you know? And I think that's really important in cutscenes. Now, when we move out into the world... I mean, you can really see what this does in uh, in night scenes and in indoor scenes. Um, now, sometimes I warm it up a tad. Uh, that's easily changed if you don't want it to be a bit warmer. But overall, the colors just really pop. The world looks sharper, yet a little bit less jagged thanks to that slight Gaussian blur. I'm not too sure how that bit will actually pick up just given the YouTube video compression. Um, but I do overall think it makes for a more dramatic and cinematic visual experience, and I think that is actually perfect for FF14, because it's a pretty darn dramatic and cinematic game, isn't it? The cinematics in this game especially pop. I think all of the extra facial detail and visual richness just helps to complete the scenes. I just think it works. Now, I use Neniko Adventurer, which is one of the Neniko gameplay presets. Generally, with uh, G-Shade, you will have gameplay presets and non-gameplay presets. The non-gameplay ones usually will nuke your frame rate into oblivion, and those are designed for people taking big, big, fancy screenshots. Now, I also know that many people enjoy the Shadowbringers gameplay preset by um, in the Espresso folder. Uh, the other Neniko gameplay uh, presets are actually great as well, I think. A few of them are a bit more stylish, even giving you Breath of the Wild light colors. But there are others that do remain faithful to the stock game. Um, then there is also in Neniko Endgame, there are a few um, Endgame uh, gameplay shots as well. I'll talk about the Endgame folder later, because it's got some crazy shit. So actually, let's talk about the crazy shit. So next, if you really are a screenshot aficionado, you're opening up G-Pose and you want to get the most dramatic shit imaginable, then you're going to have so much fun with the more out there presets. And honestly, if you're the type that's interested in this, just go through all the presets because the creativity is in you finding what you want for the shots you want to take. Now, the uh, Neniko Aesthetics, uh, Aesthetic and Unusual folder, it's full of strange, wild things, and I just really like all of those Neniko ones in general. Now, if you want to use Photoshop, then as an example, check out Arcana Chroma Key. 
there you go. Its character will be keyed out. Easy for use in post. Uh, sticking with Nanico though, head up their folder and go to the very bottom, Endgame. I believe it's a collab as, as well with um, like part of the sort of FF uh, fashion glam scene. Uh, but there's some serious, serious screenshot presets in there. Like, they are just so cool. We'll have a few of them up on the screen right now, and you can just see how they... I mean, the frame rate's awful, but if you want to take a screenshot, they're pretty damn great. And also in that folder, there are some uh, gameplay presets that you may enjoy using as well. Really, the sky's the limit, but it's just awesome that this comes with so many fantastic presets out of the box, and I think a great way to learn how to use G-Shade is just to find a preset you like and then tweak it so you can understand what the individual bits do. Okay, you might be wondering what the performance hits like. Look, it can be anywhere from tiny to humongous depending on what you use. If you're sticking to those gameplay presets, really just you should be fine. Um, now as for my experience, look, my laptop does have a 3070. That is a strong ass GPU. It certainly is not as performant as a desktop 3070 though, and I get a bit of a, fr like a frame rate decrease when I use an external monitor. So look, for me, I get a solid 60 FPS with or without G-Shade, even in combat. Now this will of course vary for everyone. You just need to play around. Some of the, um, some of the visual effect ones though that are still marked for gameplay, those really are quite light and should be attainable on most hardware. So you've made it to this bit and you might just be wondering why am I bothering? Look, for me, it's simple. I enjoy how this looks. Now, sure, I could, you know, do a more objective thought on this, but in a way, why bother? I basically just think this makes the game look like it came out only a few years ago. I just think it looks better with the effects on. In the cin cinematics, I, I just think the characters feel more expressive. I think the lighting is more mo moody and dramatic. And just like how a movie may not be best served by a super conservative color grade, I do think that the vibrant, rich world of Eorzea fits bright, vibrant colors perfectly for me. Final note for an alternative. If you really don't want to use G-Shade, and you have an NVIDIA card, there's actually some good news here. NVIDIA have got their own version, it's called Game Filters, and FF14 is actually officially supported by Game Filters. It's far more simple, it can do far less. I would just say tweak brightness and contrast, uh, tweak colors, and perhaps a smidge of sharpening. That will be very light on performance as well, from what I understand. And if you basically just want your image to pop just a little bit more, I think it's a really good option that won't involve you downloading another piece of software, but I really would implore you to check out G-Shade. So there you go. Honestly, I would not play this game, if I have the option anyway, I would not play without G-Shade. And I'm now in a funny position where I'd really enjoyed playing this game in PS5, but I've got to be honest with you, I really like what the colors do to the game experience now that I have G-Shade turned on. So. I think I'll just have to get the controller paired up to my laptop and uh, see how things go. Anyway, this is a great option, and I think it's just a testament to the passion around this game that, you know, G-Shade even exists, and that it's so loaded up with fantastic, user-friendly presets that can get anybody going. And by the way, from what I understand, Square Enix really don't care. I mean, uh, NVIDIA Game Filter is basically the same thing, and it is officially supported. Now, don't take this as thinking that you can use, um, I think there's a thing called Alexander that some people use, or, um, you know, parsers, things like that. Like, we all know those exist, but those are bannable offenses, right? So that's, you know, that's not the thing to use. Um, I believe there was actually a statement from a Square employee on a forum a while ago, where um, I think they just said, like, you know, not officially supported, so we can't take any responsibility for, you know, anything that could happen if you're, like, running another bit of software. But they'd seem to be fine with it, and it's been such a part of the FF scene for such a long time, and I've really not heard a peep of anything being done about it, and people openly talk about it on social media and in-game, which makes me think they really are pretty much just fine with it. So, that's my thoughts on that. And I suppose that's it for the video. Have fun! I'll tell you, if you're trying to get uh, get MSQ before Endwalker, install G do install G-Shade, but do so with caution, because I lost a good three hours of progress to just fiddling around with filters and running around Limsa looking at people's glams. So, <laughs> there you go. That's it for me. Thank you for watching. 
See you later.